hello here i am in the shed it's another rainy day but that's the joy of having a polytunnel so i'm just having a quick cup of coffee and i'm going to get on today and i'm going to finally start sowing some seeds now we're right the way through march it's about the 15th 16th of march now um and we've just had incessant rain we had a little bit of milder weather but the temperatures have, have been cold again for the last few days but i've decided if i don't start sowing these seeds now they're never going to get done and the other thing i have and i won't be sowing them today um, i've just popped them in this little bag um because uh, the box they were delivered in got wet um, but what i've got is a selection of bulbs but they are summer flowering bulbs let me just see if i have actually got the list so here it is um, i've got a little catalogue in with them as well i haven't even opened the envelope <laughs> thank you for your order please see inside for more great offers um, so i will have a look at that later on so basically i've got a really lovely mix of bulbs and i was hoping to show you a photograph but I don't think I have one uh, because as I said the packaging got wet um, but they're like gladioli, freesia, allium um, and a few others that I can't even pronounce <laughs> Brodier, Brodier, Asina, I can't say this I'm going to try again Acidanthera Acidanthera anybody who knows these please put it in the comments below freesia I know allium allium different colours and Liatris spicata. I think they're those pink, fluffy, spiky ones, I think. Um, I had seen the picture of them. I didn't buy them blind. Um, and they just look like a really lovely mix of bulbs. Um, so I've got those. And there's quite a decent amount of each one. But I'm going to save that for another day. I'm turning into a little bit of a stuck record because my catchphrase seems to have become I'm so behind and I really am the most behind I've ever been since living here and growing um, here on the farm. Obviously I've um, had an allotment years ago, I've grown on other properties uh, but since we've lived here this is the most behind I've ever been but I'm not going to stress myself out over it what I've decided this year is I will get done what I get done, but this year the plot will be more productive than it will be pretty. Um, so it might not look as lovely as I'd like it to, but at least I will have productive growing spaces and I will get back on top of it. So it's just the pathways are looking a bit um, weedy, um, but the beds are all good. There's still a bit of weeding left to do outside. Um, but thank goodness for the polytunnel. And the other thing I haven't done yet because of the incessant rain is I haven't cleaned the polytunnel. Now, I could have sprayed the inside, uh, but that's just been a combination of work. And also Chris and I have been quite poorly, um, hence the lack of videos. We've had a bug that's kind of worse than a cold, but not quite flu. Maybe COVID, we didn't test. Uh, but we've been quite poorly. I'm still not 100%. Um, and we've both had to have some time off work but we're getting back on track so i could have sprayed the inside of the polytunnel but didn't um, and i'll be honest with you i'd rather have done that before i start filling the staging up with seedlings but because i'm going to start them off under cloches they will be protected when i spray and i've said this before but in case you're new to my channel or you haven't heard me say it before um i use the algon spray which is totally non-toxic however if you do get it onto the leaves of plants it does um it makes like white spots so it does damage them it, it doesn't make them toxic but it does damage them so i don't really want to be spraying onto them but they'll be covered um so i just need to get going i need to i need to sow some seeds it will make me feel better so what i have done and again you'll have seen in a previous video is this year i've sorted my seeds instead of into kind of groups of type of plants so you know kind of um salads and then beans um, and um brassicas and so on this year i've gone for tubs with the month of the year that i can sow them now obviously i haven't sown anything in january and i haven't sown anything in february and now we're into march but that's fine 
because they will all catch up in the end. So I'm just going to go through my boxes and I'm going to decide what I'm going to sew today. I have diarised some time over the next couple of months to make sure that I've got time at home with no commitments, no appointments, not at work, where I can just start to enjoy my garden again because for my mental health and then subsequently my physical health I really need to be out here doing and um, the winter's been a long hard one not so much cold just really really wet and of course a lot of our time is taken up over at the farm and then of course we've got Pippa our new puppy um, who is just wonderful but she's a puppy so she needs a lot of extra time spending with her so I need to pull back that time for me. Um, so what I need to do, you can see here the onions are looking really good, the sweet peas are looking great. I have actually pinched the tops of the sweet peas out. Um, these just need a bit of a, a brush and a clean so that they'll be ready. And I need to get some pots and I've got some compost and I'm gonna put the radio on and I'm gonna spend a few hours just sewing seeds so do let me know in the comments below where are you up to i have been watching some um channels um chris and shall if you're watching you're doing amazingly well you're so ahead of the game this year um and lots of the other channels that i watch gardening channels but also lifestyle channels kind of similar to mine i can see that some people are ahead of the game other people's not so much um but we always as i say we always catch up in the end don't we so i'm gonna crack on and three tops but then I've got another one two three four five four tops that will need a clean let's pop them on here so there's a tray missing somewhere three one two three four so there must be ah here's the other one <laughs> it's just got stuff in it honestly I've never been so disorganized um, but I've got my mojo back and I'm gonna get there so let me just move these a, a moment so because the onions and the sweet peas are already in the bottoms, I'm going to take them out and I've got these, which are actually designed for grow bags, I think, but they're great. I, I bought these last year and I was in two minds as I oh, I've done all these years without them. Um, and I noticed a lot of other people using them and I thought, oh, am I just being influenced here to spend money on plastic that I don't need? But actually they've been brilliant um, because obviously they hold a little bit of water. They also stop the wood from getting too wet and they just stop all the water pouring down between the slats. So I can move these onto this tray and then that frees up the bottoms. So I've got all of those little propagators. Um, so I'm going to do that as well.
I'm organised and I'm so happy. So something I haven't done for you guys for a while is let you know the temperatures. And it's a little bit of a, a ritual of mine when I come in here. So at the moment in the polytunnel, I've got one door open and it's 16.8 degrees in here and it's 10.9 degrees outside. But I'm just going to go and do the minimum maximum. Minimum, minimum, I do this every time. The minimum and maximums. Just to let you know what a variation we've been having over 24 hour periods. So bear with me. So here in the polytunnel, we've reached within the last 24 hours a maximum of 33 degrees and a minimum of 0.7. So we've still got this massive fluctuation, but I do find that if I pop things into pots and do them closhed in my little propagators within the polytunnel, um, it's fine. Um, anything a wee bit delicate, uh, you know, like tomatoes, um, I have, sorry, I'm just messing about here, the um, hot tape, I need to put some more, um, it's lost its stick and it keeps dropping down and I really need to assess that, um, you know, address that before the summer hits, uh, because if that tape drops down, the sun hits the poly and that poly then touches the metal, it, you get these hot spots and it can be very, very damaging, so I really need to sort that out, but that's a worry for another day. So I've got some of these little green pots um, and then I've also got my good old, um, had these years, I've got a load more in the um, shed. Some of them are getting a little bit damaged, but they're fine. Um, these are the little half trays. Oh, I think a snail just fell out. Um, but I like these because they are not only recyclable, but they're made out of recycled plastic. And I've had them donkey's years um, and they've lasted and lasted and lasted. And then these are just cell trays that I've bought things in over the years and then saved them to reuse. Now, I'm testing out for the first time my Silver Grow compost. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Let's put some in a pot. So I've done a mix of vermiculite and multi-purpose compost, but this is peat-free and this is the Silver Grow. And I don't know if I, you can see that. Now, I've only just opened the bag and I'm quite delighted with what's in there. It's so hard, isn't it, to get decent compost these days. Um, and I've heard so many people talk about Silver Grow. I bought some, gosh, months ago, <laughs> just the one bag. So I do still need to get a few more bags of compost for potting on and doing. Um, I had said I wasn't going to top the beds up because I've got my super soil, but I do want to put some, um, it's different outside to here in the polytunnel because outside, you know, um, it's just a whole different ecosystem, isn't it? Whereas in here, through the months where I'm not growing, of course, I do water periodically, but it gets a bit dry. And also these beds have been going for longer because <laughs> we started with the polytunnel. So I may top up those beds and I need some compost for growing or starting things off and potting things on i have bought some bark now and um, it's not the best bark in the world but it's what i could get hold of and what was affordable to me at the time um i think i've got six bags so let me have a little look it's just outside here one two three four yeah so yeah i've got six pretty chunky bags of bark so when i'm ready um i can start doing i mean that's by no means enough but it'll certainly go a long way to making a start so I'm just going to fill up these pots and uh, get sewing. So again, you know, do let me know in the comments below. Sorry, I should speak to the um, camera. I haven't got my lapel mic on. I'm filming on my phone. Um, I don't want to sound like a broken record and moany, moany, you know, pity party. Um, but life's just been a little tough of late. Um, and today, again, as per some of my other videos, it was either get all my camera equipment together, make sure everything's charged up. Have I got a battery in the camera? Have I got a memory card that's, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I've popped you on a tripod on my phone, but I must remember that if I'm not talking directly to you, um, 
I was just pigeons. I thought there was somebody outside. Um, then you're not going to hear me. And again, apologies if you can hear the road noise. I will get back on track. I am saving at the moment for a new camera. Um, but to cut a long story short, when we took Pippa on, she got really poorly um, before her insurance had kicked in. Um, and essentially, we had um, a £5,000 bill. Uh, now, she's worth every penny, but it kind of wiped me out a bit. So um, I've seen a really lovely new camera that I'd like, because I am aware that my camera is dated now. Uh, my microphones aren't great. Um, and I've seen a lovely, it's a GoPro. Um, I decided I would bite the bullet and um, go for a really nice, it's a whole system. It's designed for vlogging, um, but not only sort of static like this, uh, but also for moving around and for outdoor stuff like my swimming and uh, the paddle boarding and walking and all the other things that I do out and about on the farm and off the farm. Um, but my funds have gone. <laughs> so I'm muddling along um, because I wanted to keep putting content out because I so enjoy it. I so enjoy filming. I so enjoy the editing process. Um, I actually find it really relaxing, especially when my health isn't great, you know that time just sitting editing i mean it can be a whole day um but more often than not it's the whole afternoon but i find it really good for me to just sit um and do something creative anyway enough waffle i'm going to keep filling up these pots and then i'm going to decide which seeds i'm sowing so as i say let me know what are you sowing um or what have you already got on the go seedlings are you doing outside inside on windowsills do you use heat let me know how you're doing it of your line of sight and I say this is just a compost vermiculite mix it's about it's more than 50% compost <laughs> maybe 40% of the vermiculite vermiculite um, but yeah so you can see actually this has got slightly more vermiculite in it than than this but you know it's it's a rough mix and it works for me um, I'm not that accurate. And now I'm just going to go through the seeds. Um, I've got some labels and a pen and a pencil for writing on them. Those all important labels. I need to just pull the hose in ready for when we need to water, but it's all connected up. Right, so this is the exciting bit. Here goes. So I'm going to go through these and then I'll come back to you on what I think I'm going to actually um, sow. <laughs>
so I'm going through my seeds and um, things like carrots, parsnips and other sort of root type vegetables, some of my salads um, and some of the other things I will be direct sowing into the beds in here and even outside. Um, so I'll be putting those to one side. Here's my super soil um, for use soon. I want to get that onto those outside beds um, before all these become ready to plant in. But that's for another day. Um, so I'm just going to keep going through these seeds and um, choose my selection for today and then start sowing. <laughs> direct sow outdoors so I've left those in this tin and I've just put together the things I'm going to start today. Um, so I've got peppermint chard, I have got some Groninger Brussels sprouts, they're in no particular order, uh, Verona red cabbage, Wild Boar Farms Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato which I'm quite excited about, Gardener's Delight Tomato, Dino Eggs Tomato, Tigrella Tomatoes, um, some Dwarf Green Curly Kale, which I love, some Zabruni, or Zabrun, Zabruni, however you pronounce it, shallots, some Swiss chard, some Black Russian Tomatoes, uh, there some Chioggia beetroot, I'll pop those to one side, some Yellow chard, some of these are from Danny, some I think from Jane, some from the lovely Robin and some from Ali. Um, so thank you so much. And if anybody else has sent me seeds that I haven't mentioned, thank you. Because I've had so many seeds sent to me over the years. Um, I've got so many. I haven't had to buy any this year, um, which under the circumstances I am so grateful for. So thank you to anybody at any point that sent me seeds. And I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned you today. Um, I've got some sweet corn. Swift F1, Madeira Maroon Beans, Purple Peacock Beans in a beautiful purple packet and I can't remember who sent them to me. Robin, if you're watching, do you recognise the purple packet? Um, some of these lovely little round courgettes that I love so much more than the traditional ones. That's another packet of kale, so I'll put it together with that one. Some basil, let's get it started now. I find it does really well here in the polytunnel, and that means that when those tomatoes come, I've got my lovely fresh basil to go with it. Um, I've got some Yukiki Kiri squash. I think I've got more squash, but I think they're for other months, and I'm not sure if these have slid in too early. I think I normally, oh no, March, April, yeah. Um, and I, again, I've often sown a wee bit early. Um, I've got some traditional courgettes, astropolka, some leek, de Carrington two, some summer purple sprouting broccoli, some red calibos cabbage, which I've had recommended so many times and never grown, and some Hilton green cabbage. Then I've got some um, cucumber that I think Danny sent to me, uh, Puna Kira, but they were sent to Danny by Ali. So they've gone from Ali to Danny and Danny to me. So thank you to both for those. These are the yellow pear cherry bell tomatoes, some Kent blue 
peas which I know came from Danny and they're wonderful and this year I'm going to try and save some of those seeds because I didn't save any last year I just kind of ate them all um, and then these are alderman peas which I'm they were phenomenal these are the best peas I've ever grown and once I've used up all my other pea seeds I think these are the only ones I'm ever going to grow um, and that was thanks to Jane for the recommendation because I've seen her have great success with peas and these are the ones she recommended and they were fabulous last year now I've got a tall pot to put those in because peas ideally I'd be planting them where they're going to go but they're going in a pot <laughs> and then at least that way I'm not overly disturbing the roots the kent blue i might pop those to one side not sow those today and i'll do them in my next batch of sewing because i really want to save some of those if they're successful so i'm going to pop a few in my tin for a later date and let's just pop that out of the way and i know i've already said it but i can't tell you how excited i am to finally be sowing seeds so that's a really good selection and um, I'm hoping I've got enough pots um, but let's make a start and see how far we get so it's um it's just coming up for two o'clock in the afternoon so I'm going to pop the radio on I've got everything I need <sighs> life already feels better <laughs> absolutely fabulous just over an hour so it was coming up for two o'clock it's about 10 to 2 and it's now 10 past 3 so actually that's what an hour and 20 minutes and uh, they're in <laughs> so I've given everything a little watering and then what I'm going to do now is just pop the propagator lids on and I will keep the vents closed but as soon as I see some germination I will open those vents up uh, but they start off closed there'll be no artificial heat or light it's just what's here in the polytunnel and as I've mentioned so many times before if I think it's going to go really cold um, so do keep an eye on the forecast um, I cover these over overnight with either towels or bubble wrap and then lift it off again in the morning um, as the temperatures start to come up And on the most glorious morning, it was cold but beautiful, we went again, my lovely swim buddy Jules and I, up into the hills to the secret sauna and plunge pool. And again, a fabulous session. It's the second time that we've been and we'll definitely be going again. So the sauna is wood fired and the pool is fed by a stream that comes from the hills and 
oh, I can't even tell you how amazing it was. If ever you get the opportunity to do something like this and you haven't, I highly recommend it. What a way to absolutely restore mind, body and soul. it's so good to be feeling productive and out here in the garden take care and i'll see you all again really really soon